Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. This is pulmonary lecture number 19, SpO2 versus PaO2. I can be found on Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, Twitter, and NursingCamp.com and I'm covering this sticky note here. And what we're going to talk about is um, SpO2 versus the PaO2. Now in a previous lecture, I covered the pulse oximetry, and pulse oximetry is a uh, method that we use in order to evaluate um, uh, oxygen saturations, O2, right? So uh, it's anywhere from 96 to 100 percent. And that's an important concept because when we're looking at oxygen, vital signs are always first. If a patient has shortness of breath or has tachypnea or tachycardia and COPD, we're going to assess this uh, pulse ox. And a pulse ox is um, basically a, a device that we put on their, on their finger, and then we get a reading of 96 to 100%. But there are some factors that could affect pulse ox, and I covered in the previous lecture, and I covered this sticky note, where hypotension, so if the, if the blood volume is low, it's going to cause a, uh, a, um, a false reading, a hypovolemia, hypothermia, carbon dioxide, anemia, um, which is low H&H, &H. and um, Raynaud's is actually a uh, problem with the, the peripheral vascular disease, so it gives a false reading as well, and pigmentation. Please see that uh, lecture on that, but what we're going to talk about is, think of SpO2 as like a manual blood pressure in relationship to a A-line which is truly a, uh, a blood pressure, right? So because the A-line, in my A-line lecture, I talked about in the vessels, in the, um, in the radial artery, we put a uh, catheter in and we get a blood pressure reading. So this is acute and uh, a blood pressure cuff is a blood pressure reading, which is chronic. Because we normally always do this. Well, and that's the reason I'm talking about that is an SpO2 is a pulse ox, but a PaO2 is from an ABG. Okay, so that makes this acute. So anytime you see a PaO2, it is acute. Um, the reason it's acute, because you need to have a, um, a blood gas in order to get it. So what is it? Well, it's partial pressure oxygen saturations and it comes from an ABG so if you have an ABG that has a pH or bi a PCO2 and a, a bicarb an HCO3 and you have a PaO2 it's an oxygen question and what is a normal PaO2 well a normal PaO2 is I call it PaO2 right so it's 80 to 100, and that's the saturation. So an SpO2 is 96 to 100, and a PaO2 is 80 to 100. Okay. So the principle is this: is, is that if it's less than a PaO2 is less than um, 80, that patient is hypoxic. Period truly hypoxic because, sorry, truly hypoxic because it's arterial blood. And it's truly, it's the, think of it as the, the pulse ox for the blood. Where an SpO2 measures the amount of O2 on the hemoglobin, because in the hemoglobin there is four parts that um, oxygen can carry. But CO2 is on there too, and sometimes sugar. So when we're looking at a PaO2, we're talking about what's actually in the um, in the arterial blood, actual oxygenation. Now, why is it important? Well, there are some factors that could affect it, and it's important because it's the amount of pressure that is going to circulate blood from the alveoli to the capillary beds. Okay, so we need that pressure in order to have that exchange. So some factors that affect it, oh, excuse me, 
some factors that affect it is anything that is causing um, airway problems. So when a person um, is breathing, air in, and those can be affected from like asthma, COPD. Now COPD is restrictive disease, so it could be a problem in the restriction, like uh, emphysema, bronchitis, also asthma. Um, anaphylaxis can also affect it. Pulmonary fibrosis, where the actually uh, the vessels, the, the, the lungs are stiff and um, they don't really expand, so it's restrictive. Um, <clears throat> So when we're looking at SpO2 versus uh, PaO2, we're generally, generally on the NCLEX, if you see a PaO2 in a question, it's, it's acute. And assume that there is an ABG, because you needed an ABG to get it. And what it does is, is that it looks at the oxygenation, true oxygenation, and then recognizes whether it is, um, the patient is in acute respiratory distress that resulted in failure, acute respiratory failure, or the patient might need to be intubated. And we need to treat the underlying cause. Is it a ventilation problem or a quality problem, which is called a VQ? And that VQ is related to what we commonly call a VQ mismatch, which I'll cover in my next lecture, where I talk about more about problems with respirations versus quality of respirations. That's about it. My name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and uh, Nurse Simon, we'll see you next time.